am thrilled and so deeply honored for this opportunity to represent the graduating class of 2023. I want to acknowledge President Mangelsdorf, the Board of Trustees, the Platform Party, and everyone who worked so hard to make today special for all of us. I will not stand here today without expressing my deepest gratitude for my support system, my family, friends, colleagues, administrators. I am here because of your love, your support, your belief in me. Today is a fulfillment of the dreams of those who came before us and the progress to proceed onward. So when I was asked to be the graduate student speaker for commencement, I nearly lost my breath. And then the next three phases of writing this speech began. First, I was in complete awe of how beautifully unpredictable this life can be. And second, I did what any self-respecting student in 2023 would do. I did not walk. I ran to chat GPT. <laughs> this is kind of a big deal. I don't want to mess up. <laughs> So when submitting my appeal to our future artificially intelligent overlords, <laughs> I requested an inspiring speech that would make me seem relatable and just like a little bit of humor, which I think I'm doing all right with so far. <laughs> and in the blink of an eye, I was met with titles like Chasing Your Dreams, The Journey Begins Now, that I like, and Beyond the Degree, Embracing a Lifetime Learning Journey which was better. And while these suggestions really deepened my fear that AI is going to take all of our jobs in about five years, um, I still didn't feel like it had that intangible human element. It didn't really feel like Raven. So third, I reached out to a professional and she told me that her favorite commencement speeches were all personal stories. Now, Personally, um, this was my worst nightmare. Um, <laughs> I'm generally a private person, but with time running down, science to publish, jobs to apply for, <laughs> I decided to take her advice against my better judgment. So, dear audience, I humbly offer to you a piece of me, Raven, in the hopes that you feel inspired on this joyous occasion. Thank you. I never thought of myself as a leader or a role model for anyone. I always really saw myself as maybe just a few steps of where I was at the time. So that was a cheerleader and an ROTC kid um, in an unaccredited school district where we were so under-resourced that we had to sit on radiators because there weren't enough seats in the classroom. I was a prolific car detailer. <laughs> I was a server at 12 different restaurants, including three different Applebee's and a pizzeria. <laughs> I was also everybody's favorite Chuck E at Chuck E. Cheese's. <laughs> I always worked two to three jobs all throughout high school and college. Which brings me to my next point. I was the first in my lineage to go away to college. which was so devastating when I became the first to drop out. So for four long years, I labeled myself, I defined myself as a quitter. Self-doubt and expectations from other people were so loud in my mind. Until I did something that a lot of graduate students do at some point in their life. They took a look around and I decided, you know what? I think, it's, I think it's high time for me to take my seat at the table, you know? I needed to prove myself wrong. So my journey began. I went to two different community colleges in two different states. <laughs> On my way back to the University of Missouri where I started my journey in the first place. And I did something I hadn't done at any point in my life, including kindergarten. 
I made the dean's list almost every semester until I graduated. And in my final semester, a biology professor, Dr. Rex Crowcroft, who was so curious as to why I kept nodding off while I was sitting front and center in his class, because I was working all the time. <laughs> he became the first person to really see my determination, and he guided me to the application process to the University of Rochester. And he's watching today on live stream. Dr. Rex Crowcroft, you changed my life. I had spent so many years struggling to go fast with no real direction, but I learned then that in order to go far, I needed other people. You cannot do it alone. But as we all know, old habits die hard, <laughs> and I was so excited to be a graduate student and to be a great scientist, but I was also so determined to make sure that another Raven, a student with potential but didn't have the tools, would slip through the cracks. So, honestly, that cycle began again. <laughs> it was overnight experiments, community service this, student representative that. I was going fast until a pandemic stopped us all in our tracks and civil unrest followed. And one night, crushed under the pressures of changing my entire research, <laughs> uh, my dissertation research to address COVID-19, and as the new president of a student organization that I had co-founded, I was watching the live coverage of the country that was built off the backs of my ancestors burn. And I got a call from Brianna Minor, who is now Dr. Brianna Minor. <laughs> and she called and she told me, are you seeing this and are you ready? And I knew right then it was time to go far. That one phone call led to a collective of graduate students, medical students, residents, business students from Simon, musicians from Eastman, educators from Warner, faculty, staff, and administrators coming together to go far. And we put a spotlight on this place to change minds, policies, and budgets to ensure that anybody who's talented, hardworking, and brilliant enough to walk these halls will leave with their star shining brighter than it was when they arrived. So today, class of 2023, I am so proud of you. And I, I have to say, that for the first time in my life, I genuinely feel proud of myself. So, to first generation students, I see you, I am you. To DACA recipients, to the queer community, to immigrants, to self-doubters, and to people who always knew that you would be here. We are all so very proud of you. And I just want to leave you guys with a few more things before I go. As living proof, I can tell you that doubt from any source should be challenged. You will go further if you lock arms with the people around you and you teach others to do the same through actions first. And if finally, if you don't remember anything else from this speech, please remember to pick up the phone for the people you love. Thank you so much.